got our huddle pod air for our audio and what we're doing is we're splitting the HDMI so we've got HDMI locally so that we can see what we're doing in our with our projector and then we're taking another HDMI output and we're sending it to an Epifan AV.io which is a frame grabber uh, very popular in the industry this is actually an amazing new piece uh, very low latency and high quality yeah. and taking that to my laptop and that's where I'm using vMix you could use Wirecast uh, and I live stream it to YouTube Live. So that's how we're doing it. Pat, if you just want to go down a little bit, I can just briefly show, we like to show off how easy it is to add a live streaming drone or an iPhone or an iPad or anything in the world. You just basically get it into the Zoom video conference uh, using a frame grabber or maybe just a USB connection to your computer. Yep. And now you've got an HD video source for the live stream. We can have up to 50 HD video sources. So, Pat, go ahead and stop okay. sharing. Okay. Tom, we're switching it to you. What do you think about our approach? <laughs> I love the drone. I love the drone. That is so cool. I wish I'd had that like five years ago when I was live streaming the high school soccer around here. <laughs> to fly that over the stadium. Of course, I probably would have gotten arrested, but that's all right. It would have been worth that. Yeah, it helps when you got your own kind of warehouse where no one will yell at you for it. Yeah. Uh, yep. There you go. Right. There you go. Yep, and then for anybody wondering, all the drone footage was last week's episode, so if you want to check it out, um, join, you know, and you can go through our YouTube channel. Actually, next Friday, we're going to be doing it again with Epifan Systems, and uh, we're going to add, so add some, <laughs> even more layers to the live broadcast. It's going to be fun. Yep. Anyway. So, Tom, tell us about yourself. You know, you are our, re our spotlighted reseller for a reason. Um, you've been doing a lot of great stuff. You submitted some test footage in, from House of Worship um, examples. Um, we just wanted, we want to tell our customers about who you are and where you're from and, you know, how you can help, um, help them out. Cool. Thanks, guys. It all started with a, a crazy online Internet TV show that we started about three years ago called That Vid Blaster Guy. I was a, a reseller or am a reseller for VidBlaster, also for, for vMix and other software and products. And we started with the motto that one guy with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. <laughs> and the other motto that, that we used was, I'm going to make all the mistakes so you don't have to. And developed a wonderful audience, international audience actually, of folks from, from Europe and South America, even had a bunch of Aussies that would get up at five o'clock in the morning to watch us on watch us live. And so found a, a great following and a lot of folks it just seemed to strike a chord with them that you don't have to be perfect. You can go out there and give it your best shot and you can grow into it. And as you grow into it, you can upgrade your equipment. And so what I found is that I would end up testing stuff putting it on the shelf, bringing it back out, testing it again, and developing, it, quite by accident, a lot of expertise in streaming with capture cards and with software and with audio, and started building custom PCs for, for customers. And it's just sort of blossomed into a, a full-time kind of streaming industry business. So we offer custom PCs for folks that are interested in that. We sell the, the individual components like the Magewell line of capture cards and PTZ Optics cameras. And we also represent vMix and VidBlaster on the software side. But basically, it all started with this TV show that uh, just took off like we, we didn't think it would. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing, you know, because you're actually extremely, uh, I would consider you somewhat disruptive in the market. Uh, you know, uh, in a way, and we love that. You know, PTZ Optics is a disruptive product line as well when you look at the established players in the market like Sony and Panasonic. So, we, I mean, we, we just love seeing, seeing someone with that motto. You know, you can do it yourself. I'm sure people come to you with questions all the time who are trying to do it themselves and can benefit from the knowledge that you've created. Yeah, and we've... All right, you got, you got time for a quick story? Quick yeah, story. Go Here it is. Yeah. It's all in a nutshell. A guy called me from New York. And he has a passion for, get this, he has a passion for hand-making shoes. That's what he loves to do. He loves to make shoes. And so he wanted to bring his passion to the Internet. And what better medium to do that than with live 
video where he can share what he does with folks literally all over the world. And so now he has an international effect from his apartment in New York City teaching people how to make shoes. That says it all right there. If you've got a passion, you can bring your passion to the rest of the world. There are folks out there that are interested in what you're doing. Tom, yeah. you, you have an amazing way to bring all of this crazy technology that, that can, can be confusing back to the earth and, and root it down into what's really important. In fact, I've watched a lot of your videos. Yeah, I've one watched of, a lot of One lot of the videos, videos that I remember watched, listening to you say how it's, it's like Legos. It's like building with Legos. And it really is. And it sounds, at first time I heard it, I was like, that really sounds too simplistic. But it's true. You take one overlay and one video rendered file and one picture and one video feed and you put it all together and then you've got, you know, what you can call almost a television broadcast. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. You can do, I would say, at least 80% of what the networks can do with the right software and the right PC. Yeah, that, that's that's actually very, you know, now I would I days. would argue that we're doing more at this point than they can do in certain ways. Now, one thing that I've never seen done, and Tom, I think you're the first person that I've ever I've ever seen do this, is you're bringing in live broadcast effects into a video conference call. Okay, so imagine what that could do for just a salesperson. Okay, you're a high-end salesperson. You want to make a whiz-bang presentation to 50 people, or with with Zoom, you can actually present up to 3,000. And you want to share it to one guy in Alabama, one guy in Mississippi, one guy in Los Angeles, and guy in Hong Kong, in a video conference format. You know, normally when you're doing this stuff, it's a one-way broadcast, which I think is good, but it's not great. Okay, I want to be able to stop and say, okay, Jim, you know, you've been in a lot of these live shows before. Tell us what you think. You know, ask me a question during the live show, and that's where we're taking it to the next level, I think. Yeah. All right, so you want to see what that looks like? Uh, we, yes, we do. All right, here you go. This is a product that we've just developed, and when I say developed, we basically took technology from three or four different sources and combined it together into one product. This is called the Bolt 4, and it is a device that allows you, if you have a Thunderbolt port on your PC or laptop, to connect into this device via Thunderbolt, and it has the ability to take inputs on four high-definition HDMI cameras and bring that into a broadcast. So somebody that is doing a sports broadcast can take this, and the right laptop out to the ballpark in a backpack and do a full four camera shoot using the Bolt 4. Yeah. They can take that same Bolt 4 back into their studio to their Thunderbolt equipped desktop PC, plug it in, and now they've got four high definition inputs into that PC. It's ubiquitous, that is, it goes anything that does Thunderbolt, the Bolt 4 will, will connect to and will bring in it will bring in your PTZ cam, which I absolutely love, flawlessly, flawlessly. It's, it's awesome. So, so I, I'm interested in the pricing for this, and then I'm also interested in what is the right laptop? Because I'm going to say that I have an i7 Dell, which my boss told me this thing is a workhorse, it's crazy, it's good, and I can't seem to do every little thing that I want to do with it. Okay. There's no Thunderbolt, by the way, too. Yeah, that's good. No, that's that's the bomb. If if you're talking about dealing with vMix, yeah. Yeah, with right. vMix, vMix really is designed to to work best with a NVIDIA based graphic system. Which I do seem to have. I do have that. You do seem to have. Okay. Then there's a setting in the vMix software where you enable that system and it throws a lot of the processing off of the CPU oh. onto that GPU, that graphics processing unit in that video card, and that lightens the load on the CPU so that you can broadcast high definition video. You can record high definition video at the same time on a laptop. We've done it with up to four cameras simultaneously. 
Wow, that's great to know. So you're not saying that it's a, it's a magic laptop. It just has a nice graphics card in it? It's not just any graphics card. It's got to be NVIDIA-based. NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA-based graphics. And 750 or higher. So you've probably got, what, a 980 in yours. I mean, this is a brand new It's two months old. It's an i7. It's got a solid-state hard drive. Uh, it does not have Thunderbolt, which, you know, isn't something that someone in a business would, would think about as a requirement. Um, so I, I understand why he didn't think about that, but it doesn't have Thunderbolt, so I'm not going to be able to use that. But it does have four USB 3.0 ports. Um, and, you know, the, the PTZ Optus cameras do have USB 3. Uh, so technically I could plug in four USB 3s into this thing, but I don't think that really is the best scenario either. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have enough USB bandwidth to support that many high-definition no. feeds. You might. Yeah. It would be yeah. worth a shot. That's you know that's the best way to find out is to try it and try to break it. And if you can break it, then it didn't work. And if you can't break it under all circumstances, then you've got a bona fide solution. Yeah, we did find that um, USB 3.0 for uh, HD HD video can be pretty bandwidth intensive on USB buses. Yes. Um, that's, yeah. that's one thing that I we yeah. have talked. So about. for example, I have four USB 3.0 ports. Two on each side, but they each on each side they share a, a bus. So you can't do two 1080 screens, but you can do a 1080 and a 720 on each bus. So technology is getting better. Maybe people won't even have these conversations in a couple of years. Yeah. Well, and here's a tip. Here's what the broadcast, the professional broadcast folks do. They pick one resolution and they stay with it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's novices like us. That say, well, I can do 1080 here, and I can do 720 there, and I'll pull in a 480 feed here, <laughs> and we end up bogging down the hardware because it's trying to make everything equal, and so it's having to process this video and process that video and upscale this one and downscale that one, and before you know it, all your CPU cycles are used up. Better to pick one resolution, like 720. That's a good a good one to pick. Yep. And let that 720 resolution be what your cameras are set up, be what your stream is set for, be what your recording set for all the way through, and then you've lightened the load on your PC. Gotcha. Wow. That yeah, makes a lot crazy. of This is going to be gold for a lot of our viewers. Um, and, Tom, I know we talked about trying to keep this, um, this, this meeting somewhat short because people get intimidated by watching a, a one-hour-long show. We want to keep it short. We want to do um, – Short and relevant. Short and relevant. You're mainly. kind of pertinent, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Tom, I wanted to um, to ask you about this this scenario that we've come into play with a lot, which is salespeople coming to us and saying, "Hey, I want to I want to use all the things I just saw you guys do in a sales setting, in in my boardroom. I want the perfect lighting, and I want to do all of these things." Have you ever come into contact with that, or is that just a foreseeable use case scenario? Now that we can pull all this stuff into a video conference, which is what most salespeople are using now because they can't go out and see every single customer, but they can certainly sit down with them for an hour over a video conference call. Do you foresee people saying, I want to take it more than just a video and an audio feed. I want a green screen background and I want an overlay and I want all these things uh, to really, because I, I mean, we've got some high, high end customers yeah. who are making million dollar sales calls and you know, would it cost them that much money to put a nice little PC in there or, and get vMix on there? I don't think so. So have you gotten to that scenario, or is this something new that you think is going to be coming in the future? Not only have we gotten to that scenario, but we've made that scenario portable mm -hmm. where you can literally take it in a backpack to somebody else's office and set them up and do a whole presentation from their desk to their customer. So... A third party could provide that, or companies could put, I mean, all it takes is a 12 by 12 room with the right lighting and a green wall behind you, a good internet connection and the right PC and cameras, and, and look out, away you go. Yeah. Wow. That's a good point, you know, even, even mobile applications, you know. I, I think that, Tom, I think that with people seeing what you're doing right now, with us, with, with PTC.